In this lab, we're going to skip parts A and B to save time, and we'll just focus on part C. So first, we're going to weigh out about 0.25 to 0.3 grams of impure aspirin into a weigh boat using a scupula, and of course, our balance. So first, I'm going to place the weigh boat on the balance, and we can see that it does have some mass to it, but we're going to zero the balance or tear it. And that's going to allow us to place our sample directly on the weigh boat and see how much just the sample weighs. So here I'm going to carefully scoop some of the impure aspirin into the weigh boat, and we're going to try to weigh out about 0.25 to 0.3 grams. Next, we're going to transfer our impure aspirin sample into a 10 centimeter test tube. So what we're going to do is grab our test tube, and weigh boats are pretty flexible, so we can actually bend it slightly, and then pour the solid into the test tube. Some of it might stick to the weigh boat um, due to static or just the environment of the day or how sticky the solid is. Um, so we do sometimes lose a little bit of sample in this step. In the next step, we're going to measure out 2.5 milliliters of deionized water. Sometimes this is also referred to as distilled water. So uh, those are interchangeable descriptions. So now we're going to try to measure out 2.5 milliliters of this water. And remember, water forms a meniscus in glassware. So we always want to reference the bottom of the meniscus to determine if we have the right amount. And now we're transferring that 2.5 milliliters of water into our test tube that contains our impure aspirin sample. In the next step, we need to boil our sample. So what we're going to do is set up a large beaker of water on top of a hot plate. And we're just going to turn on the heat setting so that it eventually will boil. After a few minutes, boiling has started, so now we need to add our test tube with our solution in it. So what we'll do is we will use some test tube tongs to hold the test tube in place, and we're just going to set it into the beaker and allow the sample inside the test tube to boil. And that way, anything that can dissolve will dissolve. After about five minutes, we can see that the solid at the bottom of the test tube has mostly dissolved. There is a little bit at the bottom, but that could be our sand, which is not soluble in water. In the next step, we're going to quickly decant the liquid away from any remaining solid using a pipette with a bulb. And we're going to pipette the liquid into a centrifuge tube. So this is a special type of test tube. One trick for separating the liquid from the solid is to place the pipette at the very bottom of the test tube. This should prevent any solid from entering the test tube, although unfortunately that can still happen. So we might still have a couple of impurities left, but that's okay, we'll take care of that later. There might also be some liquid left in the bottom of the test tube, that's also okay. This might be another place where we lose a little bit of that desired product. So now we're going to let the solution cool, and we should start to see some crystals form in solution. So if we agitate it, we can see crystals forming. And if we reference our flow chart in our lab manual, what do you think those crystals are? After five minutes of cooling, we should have a significant amount of crystals in our test tube. 
So now we're going to further isolate the solid that formed from any liquid by using what's called a centrifuge. So this centrifuge does need to be balanced in order to work. So we're going to place a test tube of water across from our test tube with our sample. And I should mention these are special test tubes specifically made for the centrifuge. All right, so our sample is across from our centrifuge tube filled with water. And now we're going to close the lid and we'll set the timer for about five minutes, but this only really needs to run for about one minute. So once we turn this on, it's going to spin at a really fast rate and that's going to allow or push our solid to the bottom of the centrifuge tube, leaving the liquid on top. So it will be easier to separate the two. Once the centrifuge is done, we're going to remove our sample. And as you can see, the solid has been pushed to the bottom of the tube, further separating it from the liquid. Now there are some crystals along the edge above, but that's okay, we're going to rinse those later. Now we're going to use a fresh, clean pipette to transfer any liquid from our centrifuge tube into a new test tube. So we're going to use that same method we did before. We'll place the pipette tip at the very bottom of the test tube and draw up liquid and then transfer it into the test tube on the right. Now let's look at our flow chart. What is the solid in the centrifuge tube? And what is in the liquid that we're transferring to this new test tube? Once all the liquid has been transferred, we're going to set it off to the side. And now we're going to use some deionized water to rinse the sample. So I'm also carefully rinsing the sides of the centrifuge tube just to make sure all of the solid is at the bottom. Now we're going to use our centrifuge again and this will allow us to separate the rinse, so the liquid that we just added from any solid. Once the centrifuge is done spinning, again, we've got our solid at the very bottom of the centrifuge tube, and it is completely separate from the liquid at the top. So once again, we're going to separate the liquid from the solid using a pipette. And again, this is another form of decanting. So we're just going to place our pipette into the solution, draw out any liquid, and then we can dispose of the liquid. But remember, keep track of our flow chart. Which step are we on? What is the solid and what is in the liquid? Once we're done decanting, you can see we have just the solid remaining in the test tube. So now we can go on to the next step. Finally, we're going to purify our sample. And to do that, we're going to first add 30 drops of deionized water, also known as distilled water. And then we're going to boil the liquid, and hopefully the solid will dissolve in the liquid, and then we'll let it recrystallize. So this should allow us to purify our desired product. So once again, we're going to use some test tube tongs to hold our sample in the boiling water on our hot plate. And again, this is going to allow everything to dissolve and then we can recrystallize it. And ideally, the solid will be pure. While we're waiting for the sample to boil, we're going to zero the balance and then we're going to weigh our watch glass. So this watch glass is what we'll use to place our sample on so we can get an accurate mass later on.
All right, so we're just going to take note of the mass, but I'll also include it in a data document on Canvas. Once our sample is done boiling, we can remove it from the boiling water. And it looks like everything has dissolved, so that is promising. Now we're going to pour our sample onto that watch glass that we just weighed. And we're going to do this very carefully so there's no splashing or spilling. So you can see some steam around the edges of where we just poured our liquid. And you'll notice some crystals already forming in the center. To speed up the process of evaporation of our liquid, we're going to place our watch glass with our sample on top of the beaker with the boiling water in it. So this should allow any leftover water to evaporate away, just leaving our solid sample. After a few minutes, we're going to remove the watch glass from the beaker with the boiling water. And as you can see, we mostly just have solid on the top. There is some moisture on the bottom from the boiling water, so we'll just wipe that off with a paper towel. So here is our final product, and we hope that this is pure aspirin, but we're going to test this by getting a melting point. Before we get that melting point, though, we're going to weigh our final sample here so we can track how much aspirin was actually in our original impure sample. So I zeroed the scale, and I place the watch glass with the aspirin on it, and we're just going to take note of the mass of the two combined. Next, I'm going to prepare my melting point capillary, but it's a little hard to get any sample when it's dried onto the watch glass, so I'm just going to break up the solid a bit, and this will make it easier to prep the melting point capillary. Now I can tap my capillary tube into the sample. And remember, you only need a little bit of sample for a melting point experiment. So once I have enough in my capillary tube, then I'm going to turn it over and tap the closed end on the countertop so that eventually the solid will fall to the bottom. The expected melting point of pure aspirin is 135 degrees Celsius. So I'm going to set my start temperature a little below that, and then my stop temperature a little above that. So here I'm setting my start temperature to 110 degrees Celsius. The ramp rate is 2 degrees Celsius per minute, and then the stop temperature I'll set at just above 135 degrees Celsius at 150 degrees Celsius. So now we'll just wait for it to preheat and then we'll add our sample. So now that the Digimel is ready and it's preheated, I'm going to add my sample of aspirin, or what I hope is aspirin, into the first slot. And then I also prepped a sample of what I know is pure aspirin from the stock room. So I'm going to place that in the slot to the right so that we can compare their melting points. So now I'm going to hit start and the temperature should start increasing. I will fast forward until we see a change in one of our samples. So I can definitely see a change in the solid. It looks like it's about to melt on the left side. So that's our sample of aspirin. 
So once we start to see some liquid form, we can write down the melting point of our sample. So it's a little hard to see, but we are forming some liquid here. So we'll write down that initial melting point and we'll just wait for the rest of the sample to melt. And then we'll write down a final melting point so that we have a range. Okay, it looks like everything has melted. So let's write down this final melting point. And now we're going to start focusing on our pure sample of aspirin and see when that melts. So we're starting to see a change here in the pure sample of aspirin. So Let's just wait until we see a liquid actually form, and then we'll write down the initial melting point for pure aspirin. Okay, it looks like we do have some liquid forming in there. It might be hard to see on the video. So let's just write down that first initial melting point, and then we'll wait for everything else to melt and we will write down our final melting point to give us a range. So there is a bit of a glare, but everything has melted, so we'll write down that final melting point for our range. And then we can compare this to our sample of aspirin. Do you think our sample is completely pure?